flaps, slats, bowlers, krugers, slots, slotted flaps. They all feature on some of the most popular aircraft in the world. But what are they and how do they help us to create more lift? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to class 11 in the Principles of Flight series. Today we're going to be looking at lift augmentation devices, which are used to create more lift when we're flying in conditions that that wing is not optimised for. There are many different types of flaps and slats, but by the end of this class you'd have a good understanding of the main types and how they are used to create more lift when we need it. If we look at a modern jet airliner, we essentially need two types of wing. We need one that is thin with low camber and a short cord when we're flying in the cruise. The thinness means that a small amount of form drag uh, is produced and when we're flying cruise speeds very fast we can see that the coefficient of drag for parasite drag is very important so we want to try and minimize our parasite drag as much as possible. We also don't need much camber when we're flying fast because if a large proportion of our lift comes from the speed element because we're traveling fast at cruise speeds then our coefficient of lift can drop meaning our camber doesn't need to be as severe and a thinner wing is lighter in weight and that means that we save money on fuel. The other type of wing that we need is one for slow speed flight. Basically, we need more coefficient of lift because when we're traveling slow, a lower proportion comes from that dynamic pressure, that V squared element. The longer cord length will also lead to a more powerful wing tip vortex, which will cause more drag, which will help us to slow down. And as you can see, at slow speeds, the induced drag is much more significant. So we actually want to take advantage of that to help us slow down at slow speeds. A wing which produces more coefficient of lift through its camber rather than through the actual angle of attack means that it can fly with a lower angle of attack, which allows for a lower nose attitude and overall a better view of the runway. Um, on the Concorde, for example, the wing was optimised for very high speed flight and it was designed in such a way that in order to produce enough lift at slow speeds, the angle of attack needed to be absolutely massive. This meant that pilots couldn't actually see the runway out the uh, front of the plane past that pointy nose that it had. That is why the Concorde had that iconic drop in the nose. It was basically so that when they were coming into land and had these high angles of attack, their pilots could still see the runway. So the way we get two different wing designs on a plane is through the use of high lift devices, lift augment devices, or simply flaps and slats. So in the third class, when we talked about lift, I covered how flaps in essence work. But I'll just go over it again once more quickly. So flaps extend from the trailing edge or the leading edge and droop down in order to increase the curvature of the surface, which means that the air is accelerated more over the top surface and the streamlines on the surface become closer together, which means they have a higher dynamic pressure. And because our dynamic pressure plus our static pressure is always constant, if we have a higher dynamic pressure, it means we've got a lower static pressure, and that means that there's a difference between the top and the bottom, and it creates a force, and that is what we use to create more lift. The simplest form of a flap is something just called a plain flap, plain and simple. They are trailing edge flaps, and they have a hinge that they rotate around like this, and they basically drop down. This drop down increases the camber of the wing. So essentially you get the same function as if you add camber to a wing. If you think about the, this would be the flaps line here, and this is the clean aircraft line here. It pushes the line up. An important point to note about uh, deploying flaps or extending flaps is that it increases the camber most at the 
back of the wing with trailing edge flaps. This means that the overall lift gets pulled back. The lift distribution pattern gets pulled back. So you have your center of pressure moving back with the flap deployment. What this means is that the balance arm for the center of pressure increases in length when you put down flaps. And because the balance arm gets longer, it means that we end up with a nose down pitching moment. So when you extend flaps, you will actually increase your visibility of the runway, for instance, if you're coming into land. All flaps work in essentially the same way. They increase uh, the coefficient of lift to allow us to fly at a slower speed and maintain the correct amount of lift that we need for flight. Another type of flaps are split flaps. The hinge point on a plane flap causes disruption to the airflow on the upper surface and actually leads to an earlier separation point um, than when you're in a clean configuration. As you can see from this diagram, it actually separates at an earlier angle of attack than the clean configuration. A split flap basically hides this hinge on the bottom surface and that hiding of the hinge means that the airflow isn't disrupted and it allows us to get to a higher angle of attack than um, a plane flap. Leading edge flaps operate with the same principles in mind. They increase the camber of the wing slightly, but due to the position, um, obviously at the leading edge this time, there isn't a real big movement of the center of pressure. The additional benefit of a leading edge flap is that they essentially round off the leading edge more and make the angle, the airflow, has to move around less sharp and less severe, which means a higher critical angle of attack can be achieved before we stop. That's what we can see here on this graph. We have a higher critical angle of attack because of this rounding off of the front edge, which will push our separation points and draw less energy from the airflow in order to get around that front edge. The design for extending the leading edge can be um, variable camber, droop nose and Kruger. They all have roughly the same function. Uh, variable camber is what I've attempted to draw here. Basically extends out the front like that and down. And there's part of the flap is housed inside. So it makes the whole front surface smooth. A droop nose works in the same way, but instead of just having one part that slides out and down, you would have the whole front section of uh, that aerofoil droop down. A Kruger flap is slightly different. It basically works on a hinge and in normal flight conditions, it's housed underneath like that. You can't even see it. And then when you want to extend it, it um, extends out the bottom and folds up. Kruger flap, I don't know why. I imagine the designer was called Kruger, but I always think about it as Freddy Kruger with his big claws. And that's how you can remember what type these ones are. Because he's got his big claws that come out like that. Fowler flaps are flaps that are housed inside the wing structure itself. And they extend out and also down when we deploy them. This leads to an increase in camber, but it also leads to a larger surface area. If you look at the wing from above, on the left here, you would have the flaps in, in this situation here. And then when you extend out, you actually increase the area of the wing overall, because you have new parts of the wing being exposed through this extension of the Fowler flaps. So you get your increase in CL because of the camber, you also get an increase in surface area, which allows us to fly a lot slower. So with a Fowler flap, you get two benefits. You get the increase in coefficient of lift and also the increase in area. So this is why Fowler flaps are favored on most modern jet aircraft, because they are the best at the job. Slats are devices on the leading edge that create a gap for air to travel through like this from the bottom surface through the middle of the wing and rejoin the airflow on the upper surface. 
the air that flows through the surface re-energizes the boundary layer. It adds more speed and more air to the boundary layer, which will delay the separation of the airflow and allows for a higher angle of attack to be achieved before stall, which also means a higher CL max. So you can see on the graph here, you've got the clean aircraft and then you extend the slats out. You're starting to re-energize the boundary layer and it means you get to a higher critical angle of attack before you stall. A slotted flap uses the same principle of re-energizing the boundary layer and it uses it on the trailing edge instead of the leading edge. This example here is a slotted Kruger flap. So you get the increase in area, you get the increase in coefficient of lift and you also get this re-energizing of the boundary layer. This is why you see these all the time on jet airlines these days because they're really good and efficient producers of lift whilst increasing that critical angle of attack. When extending leading and trailing edge devices, our slats and our flaps, we're increasing lift through this increasing camber and we're re-energizing the boundary layer, all that good stuff we just talked about. But we're also increasing the profile drag. The frontal area before we extend flaps is quite small, but then when you extend the flaps out and down, you increase the height and overall total frontal area, which is um, experiencing that profile drag. So on a wing, you'd have quite a nice thin wing, and then you add in this bottom section to the wing, which increases our profile drag. We like drag for when we're trying to land an aircraft, as it allows us to slow down to our safe landing speeds. But on takeoff, drag isn't good. Most aircraft, therefore, will have a takeoff flap setting that extends the flaps out quite a small amount to give a slight increase in lift while not causing that large increase in drag as well. If we were to have the increased amount of drag on takeoff, it would lead to the takeoff speeds needing to be higher to overcompensate for this drag. And we would essentially eat up more of the runway trying to get to that speed before takeoff. By eating up all that space for runway, we take away from the space that we might need if we had to reject the takeoff for any reason. So in summary then, flaps all work in essentially the same way. We try and increase our camber to get our coefficient of lift to go up, which will allow us to reduce the speed. There are many different types of flaps and slats, but the main ones are plane flaps. Um, these are very simple devices which increase the camber, but that hinge causes a lot of disturbance which actually leads to the airflow separating earlier. So when compared to our clean aircraft line, we increase everything overall, but we do separate at an earlier point. To solve this problem, we could use a split flap, which keeps that top surface intact and just drops down a bit at the back to increase the camber. This means that there's no disturbance from that hinge and it allows us to separate the airflow at a later stage. Leading edge flaps are flaps at the leading edge. They work by, instead of drooping at the back, they droop at the front. An added benefit of this is this rounding off of the overall front surface, and it means that the angle the air has to diverge around the front edge is much less severe, and that means that the energy taken away is much less, and that overall leads to a, leader, uh, a later separation point and generally you can see that on this line here, it's a later separation point also with that slight increase in lift. Slots are devices on the leading edges which provide a gap for air to flow through from the bottom to the top surface. This air that flows through um, re-energizes the boundary layer and allows for higher angles of attack to be reached before the airflow separates and before we stall. So that would be this dotted line here. It allows for more high angle of attack before separation. Other types of flaps are Kruger flaps, which extend out from the back, which also increase the area. And the ideal combination of all of these things that we see on a lot of jet airliners today are slotted Kruger flaps, because it has the benefit of this increased area, increased coefficient of lift, and also the re-energizing effect of these gaps in the wing. 
and you combine that with some slats and some flaps at the front and you've got a really high producing um, configuration, high lift producing configuration.